Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be teaching you how to add a color swap to a color swap animation and how to also change the colors of that color swap. So let's say the color swap swaps to black and you want it to be I don't know, purple, I'm going to teach you how to do that, and I'm going to teach you how to do that the correct way so the materials stay and they don't, you know, break your avatar and look all wonky. So without further ado, let's get into the basics as I always do here on my channel. The avatar we have on here today is Alara by Nymphy. I will leave a link in the description. I will also leave a link to Unity 2019, but please keep in mind that this applies for Unity 2018 all around the block, all the same steps. Now, let's get into it. So if you've ever had a color swap and it's going from the most basic one is white to black and you're like, man, I want to change the color of the black to uh, purple or pink and, you know, you're just dragging and dropping things and then that material doesn't stay or, you know, let's say, for example, if this you switch to black and this metal still says gold but you want it to be like silver but you don't know how to do that because when you drag and drop, it just changes back to gold. I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that. It's a little bit more of a complicated process. I'd say this is more like an intermediate process, but if you stick to my rules here and you follow it closely, even beginners can do this. Now, I want to point out before I start, just saying, I this is how I do all of my stuff. All of my videos are basically my best way of explaining it from when I was a beginner to now. I understand that there are other ways to do things in these videos and, you know, it's your avatar. You're more than welcome to do that for yourself. But I just kind of want to point out, I'm doing this to share my knowledge with you. I'm well aware that there are other ways to do a specific thing and I do try to cover everything, but I'm still learning myself. I'm learning every day. We should always strive to learn and to improve and stuff like that. So if you're watching one of my videos and you're like, oh my goodness, they're doing it like uh, the most complicated way or blah, blah, blah. I'm just trying to teach you how I'm doing it. More than welcome to do it the new way. I just want you guys to be as knowledgeable and have as much creati creative like freedom as possible because I know how meaningful it is to customize an avatar. So. Small rant aside, let's get into it. On the right hand side, we are going to look down here and we are going to see our animation tab. How we get this is we go windows and we're going to go to animation, sorry. And you're gonna pull up your animation right here. You can drag and drop that wherever you want. So you can grab the tab and pull it anywhere you want it's around here. Just have a setup that you enjoy yourself. This is my setup. I've had this for the longest time. It gives me maximum amount of space for my side. Of course, set it up however you want. Just make sure this animation tab is down there. Looking to the left-hand side, let's click on our avatar so it pulls up the inspector tab right here on the right-hand side. And we're gonna go down to animator. And this is pulled up, drop it down. From here, right underneath it, we can see controller. Now there's this little spot here and we're gonna click on the little dot here and we can see all of these things. All of these things are an FX layer. It's basically, I'm gonna call it a folder where all your animations are stored for a single avatar. It's the layer that you can apply to down here to let's say, hey, I've set all the animations up. I've set all the toggles up. Here's what I'm gonna put in. We're not going to get too in depth with that, I just, you need to know the FX layer. Now, depending on your avatar, finding the correct FX layer is going to be a bit complicated. Some avatars come with one FX layers all combined, some avatars have multiple things, but we are going to find the FX layer that switches to our color swap. Once we found that, we are going to click on it so it applies here, and then we are going to click on our avatar again if it's been deselected, and we are gonna look at the bottom right hand side. Now down here, you can see all of these things. For, uh, for me, it's going to be automatically set to this animation, but there is all of these animations here. Now you want to find the animation that you are trying to affect. So in this case, for this tutorial, it's gonna be your color swap animation. It's going to be self-explanatory. Almost all creators have this named properly. So it'll say, purple or black or color change or whatever it may be, you are going to click on that. In my case, it is black because this avatar goes from white to black. Now, if you see here, she's white. I'm going to scroll down a teensy-weensy bit. 
and then I'm going to hit this preview. From here, she goes into the play stance and she changes colors. Now, I haven't finished editing this one, so she's looking a little funky. She's looking all these different colors, but as you can see here, it color swapped. Now, there's two things that you need to keep in mind. Let's say you get down to this preview point and you're like, oh, okay, well, I can see the black now, and you just start dragging and dropping materials and hoping that it'll stay. It won't. It really won't. So let's say I want to replace this gold and I'm going to put my usual holographic and then I unclick preview and then I scroll out. As you can see, it's now applied for the white color and that's not what we want because we only want this for my pink edit, right? Or in your case, whatever edit you're trying to do. So how exactly do we apply this thing to just stay with the black? The black. Now, for the most part, if it is a completely separate material, like you can see down here, the lingerie black, lingerie white, I suggest manipulating the original material because if you do that, it'll just apply to this preview. But in cases you want to completely change the material from one thing to the next, or there is only one of the material, for example, the gold, there's no other metal here that's swapped and you're like, well, now what? You're going to need to apply it to the skinned mesh render. Now, if we look over here and pull down all of these little tabs, you can see right here, these are our materials. The skin mesh render is taking, let's say, the bra of this and saying, all right, here's the model of it. Now, here is the material. For the bra, there's two materials. There, oh my goodness, I don't know if I'm going to be able to zoom into this, but there's this little ring here. That's material one, and then the bra itself, which is material two. You know, material one is the little metal hoop, and the material two is going to be the bra. Obviously, it's two different materials, or else the little loop would also be the bra, or the bra would be the little loop. Now, there's going to be two skin mesh renders. Now, if we pull down the lingerie right here, we can see skin mesh render right here, which is the little loop, and then the skin mesh render right here which is the bra. Now, how in the world do we apply a skin mesh render? Like, I, you guys are like, oh, it's crazy. You're crazy. Well, I'm going to teach you how to do that. Now, this is a little bit more complicated, so please follow closely. We are going to use these pasties as an example. I don't know if I can get those feathers out of the way. <laughs> these pasties as an example right here. We want to make these holographic. So coming down to add property, you are going to look for what you are trying to change. Now, this can be as easy as it already being a separate thing, or it's going to be in your armature, which then, or even your body, which then you're going to have to sift through everything and find what you can. Sometimes there's multiple skin mesh renders, but I'll show you the easiest way possible. We're going to pull down the pasties, then we're going to pull down skin mesh render. From here, we are going to find the material reference. There's a bunch here. I'm pretty sure I already added it into here. So just for the sake of making this easier, let me remove this property for you and show you again. Add property. We're going to pull down pasties. Skin mesh render. And here it is. Material reference zero. There could be, there could be one. There could be two. I have seen things that have stretched all the way down to eight. Most commonly the body because they have merged things to the body. So therefore the material references are going to be all over the place. There is, at least not that I know of, a way to figure out which material reference is what. So I normally just put them all in and delete the ones that I don't need, keep the ones that I do. But from here, you're going to come all the way to the side and click that little plus, right? Now from here, if you pull this down, you can see there's my gold, there's my material reference. Now, you see right here how they're farther apart? We want all of these to line up. So we're going to scroll to the top, see this little diamond here? We're going to click that, hold and click, and we're going to drag it to line up with everything else. Now if I scroll down, it is completely lined up here. Now we're going to have our materials tab open. We're going to hold and drag the material that we want to point A and do the same with point B. Has to be both because this is an animation. We want it to loop all the way around to the change. We are going to unclick preview, 
re-click preview, and bam, it is changed. Now, what this is allowing us to do is when this animation is toggled, this is going to be toggled with it. You are adding this to your animation. It's not just you changing the color and then it's being stuck. You are adding it to the animation. Now, what I was talking about of sometimes there being multiple skin mesh renders, I'll use the body as example. Now we're going to scroll through all these blend shapes and we'll look at all the material reference. There is many material references for the body. One of them is obviously going to be the body. One of them is obviously going to be the head. Another one will most likely be the nose ring up here and so on and so forth. These things are going to keep, you know, adding to itself because things have been merged, aren't removable, etc, etc. So just adding these, popping them down, looking at the material and finding the one you want is most likely the easiest way to do it. Again, I haven't personally found a way to figure out which material reference is what. So if anyone knows, comment it. I'm add it into the description because it takes me some time. But again, I just want to share my knowledge. Now from here, this is the most important step, most important step, and it's a, what a lot of people forget to do. Unclick preview, click on your avatar, go to the controller. If it wasn't there originally already, meaning if you imported the avatar and your controller was already there, you didn't touch it or nothing, leave it. If it's perfectly fine with you, leave it because that's what the creator intended for. There's no need to finick around with that. But if the controller was not there, make sure to delete it. So I'm just clicking it and then clicking delete. Make sure to delete it because having the controller in the controller spot, the FX in the controller spot, can lead to a lot of complications. If your avatar is still in preview mode, it's going to tell you your knees or your legs are too far apart and it's in a weird position, your feet are under the floor, and when you go into VR chat, your avatar is going to be in that awkward position and it's going to break. Make sure that FX layer is deleted. I really hope that helps you. My apologies for a bit more complex explaining of this tutorial. I really do hope this helped and have a great day.